These indicators show that a bunch of Rhinox are hiding behind the display screen. I'll switch on the view pedestal, and you shoot them as they attack. I recommend using your sniper mode. Alright, uh, okay, first, uh, f first things first, uh, I completely messed up here because, uh, there's actually a, uh, wait, okay, never mind, just locked me into this, uh, I, okay, so, um, first things first, I completely, I didn't even see that guy, uh, he's actually, um, lying about the sniper mode because there's actually kind of an auto aim on this section where you just aim near the Rhinoc, it'll just aim towards him, which is a lot faster to do than actually aiming them like like um, manually, so just do it like that. You cleared them out! Let's see what kind of shape the machine room is in. I have a feeling the Rhinox haven't been keeping it too clean. Yeah, but uh, I actually messed up here because uh, there's some, I think there's like a uh, balloon up around here somewhere. Yes. Ah, there it is. Yeah. You can just do it like this. For some reason I thought I thought you had to get the bomb for, uh, from, from later on. Okay, just check to make sure there's not another one. No, I think we're good. Uh, but Agent 9, uh, this is, like, kind of a controversial, uh, uh, side character. I actually enjoy playing as Agent 9 a lot. Uh, I, I think will... it's only controversial with me. <laughs> uh, I will, I will, like, say this much. Um, he is, like, he, control-wise, he's probably the most stiff out of the characters, and his jump isn't the best. I think there's uh, a balloon in this in the other room too. Yeah. Oh, oh right in this one, yeah. Uh but um I don't know, I, I enjoy his sections. Uh um I think they're nice little challenges and if you know that you can strafe, like uh then it makes things a lot easier and uh, more enjoyable. Because if you don't know that if you don't know you can strafe it, not even just the other characters, but Agent 9 specifically, you're gonna have uh, Just as I pardon thought, um, the machine Undertale reference, but you're gonna have a bad birds. time. <laughs> to target the birds in their nests, you'll want to use sniper mode. Then zoom in for pinpoint accuracy. Alright, this time you're actually gonna want to do that. So just like... I don't know. Like, I, I can understand, like, why you, uh, you, like, not like Agent 9. Uh, like, not, not even just you specifically, but just in general. Because... He's, he feels the most unpolished, but I just find his general gameplay and uh, fun on its own. And, he's an entertaining uh, character, I'll, like, yeah. I, I won't deny that. Yeah, and I, I've been, I can enjoy, like, shooters, um, and I think they basically uh, do, I think they do a, a, some cool little things with, uh, with his gameplay. Um, like, you can argue... If they're well well done or not, but I, I enjoy playing his sections. Yeah, these uh, birds. Oh hi. Cheese and crackers. Yeah, they, they they don't usually charge after you, but like when they do, they like super fast. Duck hunt you for revenge. Pretty much. Okay. I saw one about to chase me. Right, yeah, let's just be safe up here. I think we should be able to get the rest of them. I see that one over there. There we go. The lab's clear, and it smells better in here already. Follow me outside. Yeah, I will say this. Dead bird corpses. I will say this much. Uh, I I think this is the uh, the weakest Agent I section. Uh, it's not. Like, there's nothing inherently uh, bad about it, it's just, like, when I compare it to the others, it's pretty bland. It's, it's my just... favorite, because you're not going to die as much. Yeah, it's, it's the most simplistic, and it gets you used to how he works, but, you know. I will definitely be seeing uh, um, a lot more of Agent 9 uh, later on. 
well, basically right after this uh, section, really, because we have to go back to the third homeworld after this. I might as well finish that world up. Right. Oh. oh! I thought laser was coming to get me. But, uh, but, you know, I, I, personally, Agent 9 is my uh, favorite side character. Uh, but, you know, again, I can uh, I can understand the, the complaints about him, and he definitely needs uh, uh, some touch-ups when it comes to Reignited. So, I don't know. I'm glad someone enjoys him. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, you, uh, you've uh, uh, shown your distaste uh, a few times, so uh, let, let's balance this out. Why, why, uh, why do you uh, not enjoy Agent Nine? It was like a shopping cart, and too much of his, too many of his levels involved in getting swarmed. Like, this is not. This is, this is very much a prototype for Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, I can feel that. I just realized this is basically a speedway level on land, on foot. Yeah, pretty much. It's just these guys, and you'd expect them to be in a speedway. And that guy just crashes into the... onto that. Tony. Yeah, a lot of back to for uh, dragons. Oh, so there's a skill point here. If you uh, blow up all the trees, you get one. So we're gonna have to backtrack. Oh, hi. By my calculation. Yeah, yeah, he's just gonna tell us about the bombs. And we're gonna have to backtrack anyway, because there was a chest. I like playing as Agent 9 in Season of Flame. <laughs> what was he like in that game? More of a top-down shooter. I can see that working, yeah. Top down my well isometric because that's how the Game Boy Advance Spyro games were. Yeah. And he like he only used him I think he only used him like in a few side missions, not he didn't get very lengthy sections. Mm. Uh, let's not waste this. Let's not waste this, I said. There we go. I wonder what Agent 9 is going to look like in Reignited. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because we've seen, like, Sheila at this point, and she looks, like, completely different. I mean, to be fair, her, uh, her design was pretty basic in this game, so... Yeah, well, I mean, it was. I, I, can, I can see benefits to both design. They're both generic cartoon animals in their own special ways, but... <laughs> There's more One going just... on. There's more going on in the Reignited version. Quick, we have to find it. We have to make her look like a girl. Pretty much. Her eyeshadow, a thin waist, and hair. Yeah. Oh, I thought something happened to you. Uh, but yeah, because like, in in this in this game, the only way you can really tell that she's female is her voice. Like by looking at her, she you're not really gonna like think that. To be honest, right? I will say I, I will say this much. I'm not a fan of this section because you have to like try and aim the bombs at these guys, and uh, yeah, as you try aiming manually, they're not really going to give you enough time to do that. Like, it would be better if like they if the bombs just kind of aimed near their general direction, but they don't. You just kind of have to. Uh, Hope you throw it. Uh, hope the run. yeah. You just kind of had to hope the arc like lands on them. And thankfully, we just have one left to do. That come on. <laughs> Thank you very much for saving my laboratory. I was trying to get get some thinking. gems. 
Rowan. Yeah. That's a very... That's a very interesting name for a girl. Yeah. It's really weird when, like, what, like a regular basket has, like, a bunch of gems in it. Right. I'm getting paranoid about this. Is this the first time when the professor just starts mumbling in his idle animations? Um, I think that was in Spyro 2 as well. I can't remember, and we played that game not too long ago. Yeah. That was before Smash Ultimate. I forget everything before that. Oh yeah, it was. Like it was like right before E3. We were we were innocent younger people back then. Even though it was like um like what not even a month ago? I'm still missing gems. About two and a half months ago. Oh hi. I was right to be paranoid about that. Uh but uh Yeah. It also like <laughs> Went up a, a bit later than I uh, than I uh, wanted it to, but uh, we're fine. Let's actually exit the portal because it's right here. Blow out the portal as you leave. <laughs> <laughs> now you are escaping. I like how um, Spar uh, reignited like the portals kind of. Uh, was it structure themselves out like uh, like it's made of Legos or something? Mm. Right, even in like. Wait, this is evening, like, isn't it? Uh, no, this is like Midnight Mountain or something like that. Okay. The Midday Gardens is the second. Yeah. Second. Well, I got it wrong. Yeah. Well. Oh, okay, so, um, Asian 9 section or Sparks? Let's just get the Asian 9 section over with. Alright. <laughs> this is one of, I think this is what you're about to engage in, I think is my most, my most hate, second most hated Agent 9 mission. <laughs> it's a Doom parody. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually like this one quite a lot, but there is, uh... It is actually admittedly really difficult, and if you don't get the, the secret skill point um, upgrade, it's really hard, so, uh, yeah. I appreciate that they give you these quick teleportation stuff, basically. Yeah, helps. Uh, uh, Spyro games, like, said this a few times in the playthroughs, but Spyro generally, the Spyro games generally have a good, uh, good uh, idea of, like, just not wasting the player's time. And like, when you have to backtrack, uh, they... Or as you like, fall down the lower path, they put like, a whirlwind or something to make it easier to get back. No, not always, but most of the time they do. Hi, Agent Nine. Behind those doors are some pretty scary ninjas. I bet you could use your sharpshooter skills to take them out. Remember, press the circle button to shoot. And use L1 and R1 to dodge left and right. Alright, so it's gonna go into first person. I probably shouldn't have done that, actually, but whatever. Uh, but... Oh yeah, this is a uh, Doom parody. Um, and, uh... Oh, upbeat Doom music ever. Yeah. Yeah, th this, get, this, is actually, this is actually pretty tough. Uh, you want to be careful around here. And there's a lot of, um, of those um, just enemy duplication boxes. I don't know what to call them. Uh, but, yeah. You better, better watch around here. There, there, are, there is fodder around here, so it's not like you can get you to like, do this no damage. But, yeah, it's still... Anyways, uh, okay. there is a secret. If you look up here, a special upgrade, <laughs> and this is gonna help a lot because uh, it basically makes your shots uh, rapid fire. Because uh, your blaster. Um, like, without this, your blaster is pretty slow. 
And with all the enemies like come uh, in in this section, you kind of you kind of need something like this. So yeah. Believe, uh, believe me, I, 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 the first time I went through this section, I didn't know that existed, so I had to do this the hard way. Me too. Now you know why I hate each mine. <laughs> yeah. But even still, like, I still enjoy, I still enjoyed the this section, uh, regardless. But yeah. In terms of just general difficulty, the Agent Nine is where things really start to pick up. So yeah. If you're not a fan of his gameplay, um, the difficulty alone is probably gonna make you turn you off from him. So, yeah, you're just gonna snipe She's these just guys. Picking them off. Yeah, you kind of want to do this uh, if you want to have a easier time. I like that they just don't know us. It's great. Yeah. I don't know though. I enjoy this. I uh, don't really know what else I can say. So. Uh, you want to talk more about Reignited? <laughs> Hunter looks kind of like carved out of wood. <laughs> Like the bridge of his nose. Yeah. Like the old hunter was blocky by technical limitations. Yeah. Now this one's blocky by by stylistic choice. Yeah. I kind of like it though. Like some people called him like that. Like he kind of looks like a stoner, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, hunter is a stoner. Let's not lie to ourselves. <laughs> So yeah, I'd basically just get a lot of run, basically gun and run backwards is my, my strategy for this. Pretty much, like, when you have, like, have them, like, running up to you, just kind of back away. Yeah, not run and gun, but gun and run. Pretty much. Man, I... You can like aim, uh, like do the sniper a aiming, but like I, li I like just just getting the bar getting rid of the baskets uh, in normal view. But it's like it's just barely you're just barely able to shoot them. It's kind of annoying. An auto target for the barrel at least would be nice. Yeah, that would that would have been nice. Oh, hi. Hey! It's fine, we got this guy in here. Oh. Fuck is innocent, leave him alone. <laughs> I like how he's like stuck in a corner. Alright, don't be fooled by the egg actually, because uh, you have to backtrack to the beginning. <laughs> and, uh,. It doesn't sound bad, but there's like a whole like bunch of new enemies just waiting for you. Yeah, you know like how in a stealth mission where the alarm just randomly goes off and you have to basically force your way through a bunch of enemies? Pretty much, just basically what this is. <laughs> I like how it has to like snap back to a third person. <laughs> This is crap. What is the child abuse in this game? <laughs> Thing is, uh, that's not even gonna matter. Uh, but yeah, just we're just going back here. There's uh, some more gems to get through these uh, um, these boxes. So yeah, besides that, it's not not much different. Just just a bunch more enemies. <laughs> 
and a guy um, running into a wall. Yeah, what was he trying to accomplish there? I have no idea. So, you kind of, kind of just want to like slowly pick these guys off one by one. Don't be too reckless, cause uh, ah, stuff like that can happen. Like, what is that guy doing? I'm gonna get rid of that box. I think there's another one. I don't think there is. I might be thinking of another room. Yeah. Right, let's make sure we didn't loot Miss Jum or anything like that. Well, I thought there was a time limit in this for this mission. Uh, no. It's, you, you can take as long as you need. Oh, wow. <laughs> So the, the bomb literally is you, you say, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. And again, like, that's not even the reason why I, I said, like, it doesn't matter, like, you'll, you'll see what happens, but we, we could have, we, we literally could have uh, le left him there and he, he would be fine. Yeah, aiming is a bit gun again a bit out of whack right now. Yeah, you're probably gonna end up like using up most of the machine gun ammo at this point. And you don't get like a second round of this, so Yeah, it's definitely like a box. Oh, there's like two more in here. Yellow! Goodness gracious! Yeah! Probably shouldn't have walked in there. Oh, that, Jeez, that's... Like, you, like that scene from Revenge of the Sith when I can't open one ran... Wait. I say a scene, but I think it was a deleted scene, actually. Oh? Like, Anakin and Obi-Wan were on the ship to get Palpatine. They back up into an elevator, and they didn't. They they walk in backwards, and they find that they're surrounded by battle droids. Oh but no, that that's in that's in the uh, that's in the movie. Like when they oh. yeah, they just they look backwards and they just like just look each look at each other and just sort of yeah, they're gonna die. <laughs> I guess there was a special. I don't know. I don't know what happened then. I think I, I think what happened is uh, they. Uh, in quote unquote like deleted scene or whatever, they they just have like a little extra end to it where they just go like Roger, Roger, and just like make fun of the droids or whatever. They should have kept that in. It was, it was it showed camaraderie. Yeah. <laughs> I like this one like uh, failed take, where, like when Anakin, Anakin is like um, carrying Obi Wan and all that. And like when they had to go to uh, the elevators, um, a fail take out had him go to the wrong one, <laughs> and like, and like you could hear uh, like Lucas just be like, uh, "Wrong door." <laughs> Star Wars movies are great. Like there's one yeah. from Revenge of the Sith that happened. You and McGregor like it was against Obi Wan and Anakin versus Dooku. You and McGregor throws his lightsaber prop and it hits Hayden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and just fakes an injury in, and you and like doesn't even bother to break character. <laughs> He's like, I'll fight you on my own. I love that. Like, like, and look, Hay Hayden just like, just, like stands there for a second, and he's just like, oh, I just like fakes like him being that, like hurt. <laughs> like, it, sh it, sh it shows that they're like they're having fun being in their roles. Yeah, they were having fun. Right. But we all know the best outtake is just you and McGregor on a speeder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! He's like, yeah! Oh, look at that, the bomb still blew up and he's fine. <laughs> so we didn't even rescue him pretty much. I mean, we got rid of all the Rhinox, I guess, so that counts for something, but still. Did Heidel just go through a personality change between games? Uh, is, it just, is it like a different voice? Different voice, I know that, but like he seems nicer overall. Mm. Feels weird jumping into a portal like that. Oh gosh, it's over. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, I just <laughs> Star Wars bloopers are funny.
like the the one where Hayden just like accidentally like pulls off the um the lever or whatever off the the speeder bike or whatever it's called, and he's just like, <laughs> oh man, oh, that's bent right now. I think you're like on top of the tower, but on this upper section. So what we learn from these signs that Sparks can write. Yeah. Princess Amy showed me a place called Starfish Reef. She says there's an egg hidden in there. I think Sparks should check it out. Yeah, it'll be funny, like, if, uh, like, the ladders are, like, all, f like, flat and everything, like, flat textures. So it'll be funny if, like, you just, you just drew, like, like, with, like, a, like, a pen or, like, a pencil or something, like, the ladder, uh, sprite on a wall somewhere, and it still acted as, like, a ladder. That, that would be hilarious. Are you ready for loud spark sound effects again? Can any of us truly be ready? Like, why is this so loud for? Maybe you can change the, uh, this, yeah, the sound effects in the menu. Yeah, we should probably do that. <laughs> no, that's the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah, I should be fine. Cause, uh, good lord. That's like, it's like twice as loud, twice as loud as the rest of the game. Uh, but, um... I know, what were we talking about? Like, Star Wars? Star Wars, Wibbers, and Ladders? Yeah. Well, I, I, no, I have nothing else to say about the ladder thing, uh, but I feel... Like, do you have anything else to talk about when it comes to, like, Star Wars bloopers and all that? Um... They're beautiful moments. Yeah. Dang it. Yeah. Like, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, moments with, like, just R2, R2-D2 just, uh, making everyone crack up by, by him just, like, bumping into things or whatever. Oh yeah, I remember the one from Phantom Menace, they, the R2 prop is kind of tipped over and they tried to edit in Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, wait, there's another good one. <laughs> what happened? I think it was a scene in Anakin's house when Jar Jar and Qui Gon are eating dinner. The Qui Gon, the scene where Qui Gon grabs Jar Jar's tongue. And yeah, that, that makes, it makes sense in context. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, like Liam Neeson saying the line, don't do that again, and then Jar Jar's actor, Ahmed Bess, is <laughs> making some weird sound effect. Because I. Like, <laughs> I guess, again, they edited Jar Jar in, so it's like... Yeah. So it's like almost in character blue with like Toy Story 2. Like, it makes me like, wonder how like, they... How they do stuff like that. Like, just actors and all that. Yeah. I kinda wish, uh, speaking of like, Star Wars and stuff, uh, I kinda wish that one scene... Uh, on the ship where like... Uh, they they come across like General Grievous and then they have to like. Shock hmm? You mean General Grievous and Shock Team? Yeah, that yeah, and then they have to uh, go down to. Ah, um, uh, the lower levels. The lower yeah. levels. It's like Wasn't your. That in the game. I have no idea, but uh, it's like your idea of safe is not the same as mine. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I don't like. I don't know. I I can I can enjoy the prequels for what they are. Uh, mainly one and three. Like I think I think three especially it, three itself is legitimately a good film. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of where I'm at. Revenge of the Sith actually has like the opening to Revenge of the Sith is probably some of the most fun Star Wars moments. Yeah. And I think it like that just, whole opening sequence just. The whole rescue mission is just fun. Yeah, and like it, it's con, like it, it, it's constantly like uh, do, doing doing things like like uh, it feels like everything ma uh, matters. Whereas like uh, Attack of the Clones, uh, th these guys spawn in way too quickly. Uh, like Attack of the Clones, uh, a lot of it can be just kind of whatever to be honest, and you don't really need to care that much until the near the end. 
Whereas, like, Revenge of the Sith, like, everything that happens has, like, a massive effect on this, uh, on the Star Wars universe. Attack of the Clones is one of the most important Star Wars movies in the grand scheme of things. It just takes a very long while to get going. Yeah. Yeah, like, The last just... act is actually pretty good. I won't, I won't yeah. deny that. Yeah, the last act is good, but you have to watch, like, a, was it a two-hour movie to get there? Oh, no, it's longer than two hours. Well, I mean, well, I mean, like, the, the time period before it gets to the actual, like, interesting stuff. Uh, I, I, how, uh, yeah, I guess. I, I I still think everything, once they get to Geonosis, is gold, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm not- I- I, I kind of like- I kind of like the sequence between, like, Anakin and Padme, like, like, Chuck going through that, um, uh, trash- Factory? Yeah, the, the factory and, like, all the stuff- they- they- they had to, like, avoid all the- all the crazy, like, contraptions and stuff. I thought that scene was pretty fun. I, I miss those set pieces, actually. <laughs> yeah. I still oh, like I I enjoy I I've like I I have enjoyed episodes seven and eight like like there's a massive hate train going around for Last Jedi for some reason but um, I I do feel like uh, I don't want to say formulaic but they haven't really the the new movies haven't really done anything too outlandish like the other movies had like have like. I think last Jedi was pretty outlandish in its own special ways. Yeah, but I mean, like more in terms of like set set pieces, I guess. Like nothing. Yeah. Okay. That I'll I'll give you that for the most yeah. part. It's been kind of yeah. Lacking to the point. Yeah, because I. I don't know what, what we the environments we've had we have gotten are fine. They like they work for what they need to do, but we haven't had anything too crazy outlandish or creative. Uh, in the new movies, I want to say, and I don't know. It'll be fun. It'll I, it'll be nice to get something like that. Hmm, we're trying to think of what they could. I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, uh. I, mean, I, I think guess... I actually wouldn't mind them going back to Jakku. I want to see more of that planet. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because like we, we basically just, um... Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure what, what uh, you, you'd show, but... Because like, they, they kind of just made it out like it's just in the mid it's like, nothing. Uh, but... I don't know. And I'm in I'm curious to like, see, like, I think, um... What was, it, what was his name? Uh... Who's the guy that wrote episode 7? Who wrote it? Or directed it? Uh, uh directed it. JJ Abrams. JJ Abrams. Yeah, I think he's doing episode 9. So yeah. I wonder- Yeah, so I wonder if he- if he's gonna follow up, uh, Ryan Johnson's, uh, movie by actually making r uh, Ray's parents no- just- just nobodies. Or- or, like, kinda play with that a little bit and just- like, be like, okay, the, these are what her parents actually are. Because they could literally... He, he, he could do literally anything. Abram seems to really like Last Jedi, so I think he'll honor Johnson's work. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed Last Jedi for the most part. I, I have, It's probably the most weird movie, weird Star Wars movie. Like, I have the most, like, w like, confusing feelings towards it compared to any of the others. The, like, I'm sure I, it's an interesting film, like... Yeah. It makes you think. Uh, I need to rewatch Force Awakens and Last Jedi back to back just to see how everything pans out. Yeah, I should probably do that as well at some point. Because, like, it's one of those things where... So I, I'm kind of confused by how I feel. Because, like, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. But... Oh, so this Manta Ray is annoying. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I don't know, it's a weird movie. It, it takes a lot of risks, which I think was uh, necessary, just to make Star Wars move in a new direction. But, yeah, I don't... Yeah. That is actually very interesting. For the first time in 
a lot of time, really. Star Wars fans don't know where the story's going. Yeah. Which is a nice change of pace, because, uh, the thing with, like, um... I mean, I mean, I guess, like, we haven't had that since the original trilogy, really. Like, I, I wasn't, like, into Star Wars. I don't think I was even born during that time. But, yeah, like, prequels, you know generally where it's gonna go. And, uh, you know. But, yeah, with the new trilogy, like, they could literally do anything. Which is partially why, like... It, it was so exciting to get a new trilogy announcement, like, the fact that it's after Return of the Jedi and all that. And I think it was a- I honestly think it was a, a, a smart move to uh, just kind of wreck on the- uh, a lot of the, um, uh, was it the- Expanded Universe? Expanded Universe. Mainly in regards to, um, the- the- um, stuff that happens after after Return of the Jedi, because if they if they said the expanded universe is all still canon, that would mean that everything, all the books after that take place after after Jedi would have to be canon as well. I feel they like have they have no wiggle room in that. Yeah, in that case, yeah. If they if, if they did that, they they would have no like room of, for creativity. So I think that was a good move. That was a good. Uh, Choice sure uh, on doing that. Now so, the magic I, I don't know. Has made you even stronger, so you can uh, I, do, I do miss some things fire. from the expanded universe, mainly like Force Unleashed, but <laughs> yeah. My friend loves Force Unleashed. Yeah, because like, mainly for the fact like I would be, I would have been more okay with uh, Force Unleashed being cut from canon if they if they released the third game and just wrapped that story arc up, but. The fact that they didn't, and it's probably just going to be lost to the to the ethers of time with no actual conclusion, is what bothers me. Oh, like if they, <laughs> huh? They could always try and try and reintegrate Star Killer into the new. I wouldn't mind universe. that. I would like. I, I would actually like that, but it had to be yeah. heavily nerfed, but it could work. Yeah, but like yeah, because like. Yeah, but like, uh, if they, if they, um, brought, um, fi finished, like, made Force Unleashed free or whatever, uh, but still said, oh, the Expanded Universe is, like, non-canon now, and, like, Force Unleashed is a part of that, I would be more okay, okay with it then, because, um, the self- contained story from for Star Killer is finished, so I wouldn't have to have those like lingering like feelings about what would happen in me. But regardless. This is a weird looking level. Yeah. This is a pretty cool level though. I like how it looks. And uh, uh, uh one I guess the so I had like one other thing to say, but I can't remember. Oh, no, no, uh, st about, like, Starkiller. Like, apparently, apparently they, uh, uh, wanted him to appear as one of the Inquisitors in Rebels at one point, but it never happened. Oh. Shh! Spyro, don't tell anyone, but we've stolen some magic from the Sorceress. We're hiding here whilst we practice using it. Unfortunately, we've had a bit of an accident and turned everything into crystal, and it, it seems to have aggravated the indigenous creatures. Uh, since we're on, like, just this massive styles ramble, uh, um, how do you, what do you think about, like, uh, Clone Wars actually being able to have, like, finish its story arc? Um, I'm happy. I saw yeah. a trailer when you posted it, I think you posted it in Discord. Yeah. I, I sent a link of the video to my friend. I went to go get some water. Calls me within three minutes. <laughs> How'd that go? Oh my gosh, he sounded ecstatic. It was great. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, like he sounded just like he, was, he almost sounded like he was about to cry. Oh dang! Like it... He wanted. He really did want Clone Wars to come back. Yeah, I was like, because like there, there's a whole like uh, hashtag save Clone Wars thing. Like, I didn't. I didn't think they, they'd actually go ahead and do that because I I thought. 
um, they were just they were just gonna move on from Clone Wars and Disney would be like, uh, let, let's just like leave this in the past or whatever. But they, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of cool that they actually uh, listened to like what to people trip? wanted. Watch carefully. As you can see, uh, apparently it's only going to be one, uh, one new season right with like but now what, 15, 13 episodes or something like that, but the, word, the fact that it's actually, that it's actually just being finished, like the, it's being finished and hopefully will tie into Re Revenge of the Sith is just, it's oddly satisfying. I don't know how, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but it's just satisfying to see like just the con- like, just the tie-ins and all that. And just seeing how it connects together. Ah yes, I forgot they were supposed to- the last episode of the was supposed to be Palpatine's kidnapping. Yeah. Cause like, the uh, 2D- the 2D cartoon uh, did a similar thing, like, it goes directly into the, um, fight above Coruscant, I think. Uh, uh so, I, yeah, I think they were- they were- they wanted to do something similar. But they just never had the chance to. So hopefully they manage to get their wish this time. But I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to it. 